Hi everyone, Charlie Bush, Squim City Manager here with Joe Urban, Assistant City Manager. And we've got another weekly update uh, scenario for you. So this is uh, from an email I just sent to Council. I'm going to go ahead and kick it off. Uh, the Olympic Affordable Housing Trust, there's a meeting this afternoon up in Port Townsend of a bunch of partners talking about creating an affordable housing trust. Unfortunately, we could not make the meeting, but I just let Council know what was going on and that I'm uh, meeting up with some people to gather some additional information so I can check in with them to see if uh, they would be supportive of our involvement in that. And uh, we also have some update on Highway 101 improvements in East Squim. Uh, we've been informed by Washington State Department of uh, Transportation that they're in, uh, working on a preliminary design of a fish passage uh, bridge at US 101 in Johnson Creek. There's a lot of other intersection improvements that in this vicinity, Happy Valley Road, Palo Alto, Luella, uh, White Feather. It's a stretch that we really want to take a hard look at. So uh, Public Works Director David Garlington's recommending with the partners that he's been talking to at our Regional Transportation Planning Organization to do a corridor study. Yep, and we communicated that with uh, our state and federal legislative delegation this week as well. Next up, we had an emergency management committee meeting. We have one every month. We had one this week, and we continue to make progress on all fronts related to emergency management. So continuing to follow up on the Cascadia exercise that we had about a year ago. Uh, you may recall a few council meetings ago, the ACLU uh, sent a representative to talk uh, about uh, proper best practices in police departments. Uh, our um, Lexa Pool statement has uh, come out and are verified that our police department is uh, operating in a best management practice and we have no concerns here. Yeah, consistent with, with what the ACLU uh, asked of us. That's right. They yeah. came out and said, yep, their policies are very consistent. So that just backed up what we had already said, which was great to hear. We met with the North Olympic Le uh, Library System. I almost said legislative. I'm used to the legislative lines. Too many acronyms. There are. Uh, the uh, North Olympic Library System, we met with uh, Margaret, uh, Margaret uh, Jacobson. I cannot. You know, I look at her name, and yeah. it just doesn't jump out at me that way. But thank you, Joe. Yes. Uh, Margaret Jacobson. Uh, and she let us know about their plans for a bond in uh, potentially in 2018. They'll be talking about it as a library board over uh, the course of this year and er into early next year. And she stopped by to brief us uh, so that we can have an opportunity to brief our city council as well, which she'll be back to do with us uh, later on in the spring. Uh, Jefferson County Department of Emerg Emergency Management speaker uh, is the next item I get to talk about. And basically, they're hosting a panel of state experts on tsunami, tsunami science. Uh, this is going to occur Friday, April 14th from 6.30 to 8.30 at the Chim Chimicum High School in uh, Chimicum. Uh, World-renowned Brian Atwater will be a keynote speaker there, and he is the scientist accredited uh, uh, with uh, proving that the Cascadia sub subduction zone uh, is much more deadly and dangerous than previously believed. And next up, we hired a new assistant to the city manager this week. She will uh, both assist us in backing up the city clerk's office and will be a big part of the city manager's office and doing all kinds of different tasks in that area. And we happen to be very fortunate to hire one of our own staff members, our senior planner, Sharice Deshane. Sorry, Joe. It's an amazing hire. Keep stealing staff members from the area Joe's managing. <laughs> uh, and it blows a hole in a different part of the organization, but we're really excited for Sharice and uh, to have her transition into this role. She beat 50 candidates from around the country, so that was pretty awesome. And she brings a lot of experience, including parks, planning, uh, and an MBA uh, and 13 years of local government experience to the job, plus some experience with the innovation team at the city of Olathe, Kansas. Uh, so we're, we're psyched to have her transitioning into this new role. It'll probably take us most of the summer to fully get her out of her older role, uh, just given that she's working on development projects, but we'll make that happen gradually and backfill for her position. Really be a big addition on a lot of the uh, council priorities that we've Absolutely. We're, we're excited. We're super excited. We've had retirements. Uh, Bobby Esselman, Deputy City Clerk, is one that's upcoming in the next few weeks. And uh, Chris Hugo, Community Development Director as well. Uh, so we're kind of transitioning through all those retirements and, and dealing with, uh, with that at the moment. Yep. 
uh, the Alliance for Innovation uh, Ambassador Newsletter has come out, and uh, they have put our Hall of Fame lip dub as the lead story in this month's edition, which is really great news. It's pretty cool. I should have done a screenshot on that, Joe, but it's, it's a little messy, but you get the idea. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, a lot of smiling works. faces out there. Definitely that. All right, we also... Uh, kind of almost in the category of root canal. Uh, <laughs> we got an, another audit this week, this one from the, uh, it's the annual audit from the Association of Washington Cities uh, Risk Pool. Yes, exactly, watch, watch the team. Uh, and uh, they were only in for a day. They asked a bunch of questions, collected a bunch of info, and we'll know shortly how we did. And the kudo of the week. Indeed, exciting is, stuff. Uh, the drum roll, this is really great news. Um, there we go. The state of Washington slipped in there. I know. That was weird. That, was that is where we live. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Could have been worse. We've uh, recently conducted an uh, employee engagement survey. Uh, we modeled the uh, Gallup Q12 uh, survey. It's been going on for over 30 years. And our employees uh, have collectively turned in the responses. And I'm really, really happy to say that we're a world-class organization. Yeah, 63% engagement. Yep. You know what the national average is, Joe. It's like 30%. Yeah, I know. That's pretty cool. So we, we have a special place here. We yeah. have a great team and uh, just really happy to be here. Absolutely. We've got awesome folks, and we're excited to push this even further over the course of the next year. The survey gave us all kinds of insights, things we could do to make our workplace even better. So we'll continue to do that, but we're psyched. This is a great first result. And we've also attached for Council's review an uh, uh, article to the American Society of Public uh, Administration. Yeah, it was an article on engagement in the public sector, which shows that 44% uh, engagement is roughly the average in, in local government. So we're certainly above that, um, and it also showed state government and Federal government, state was last actually, which surprised me a little bit. I thought the federal government might be last, but who knows? But I've heard engagement's dropping too. So. Well, that means uh, we have a bigger impact here locally. It's very true. Well, I think that's part of the reason we get to be close to the people we uh, we serve. Yeah. So we're very happy about that. And uh, that pretty much sums up our weekly update. It's one thing left to do. I'm, I'm throwing it. See y'all later.